Welcome to Comics with Dan. This is the Comics Commute number 10. Uh, I, I actually hardly read anything in this past week just because I've been sort of busy uh, getting the, uh, the interview I had with uh, Richard Blake, the creator of Hexagon Bridge, prepared. Uh, so definitely please go check that out. Um, it's a long video. It's about 47 minutes, but it's, um, it's easy enough to just sit and listen to because uh, it's just a phone interview. So uh, definitely go check that out. And Hexagon Bridge is the trade paperbacks coming out in May with the final order cutoff being uh, April 22nd. So be sure to, uh, to get that out there. I have been reading uh, a little bit of uh, Tales to Astonish uh, from back in the 60s. Uh, the, the issue specifically with, uh, with Namor the Submariner and uh, the Incredible Hulk. Uh, it, it's pretty decent so far. Um, I, I don't know that... I, I think I can see how Namor's uh, character has developed a little bit, but he still sort of has that, uh, you know, sort of arrogance about him that I kind of like. Uh, but we'll, uh, I, we might touch on that a little bit. Um, I am two issues into the uh, League of Comic Geeks book club read, which is uh, a book called Die uh, by Kieran Gillen. And uh, honestly, I wasn't sure. I was really, it was really up in the air as to whether I'd like it or not, but we'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, my pulls this week, uh, I only have on my actual list uh, Transformers, Transformers number seven. And uh, but I also, I didn't get Rook Exodus number one last week because they, I guess, the, the, the shop got shorted. And I also uh, didn't get Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries number four. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to both of those as well. And so the first thing I want to talk about, um, we can kind of expand on Hexagon Bridge a little bit. Uh, so the story of Hexagon Bridge is about uh, two cartographers, a husband and wife, uh, that are attempting to map this parallel dimension uh, that's been discovered. It's called the bridge. Uh, and then they get lost in this dimension, right? And so they have a clairvoyant daughter uh, named Adley, uh, who with her her AI robot companion, Stodden, uh, attempt to go rescue her parents. And uh, the, the story is, is compelling. I really, without giving it away, really, really enjoyed the ending. Um, the, uh, the art is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, I, I mean, even if the, the parallel dimension thing isn't necessarily for you, uh, you could at least pick up this book for the art alone. It's just, it's gorgeous. Um, and so I pulled the individual issues back in uh, at the end of last year, uh, with a final issue coming out in January. So, um, but the, the trade paperback is coming out this May. So definitely go check that out. And, uh, if you click the link, uh, that I'll put up here, uh, you can, it'll take you to the, um, the link to my, uh, interview with Richard Blake, uh, who was the creator of Hexagon Bridge. And I, I sat down with him and, uh, we had a great conversation talking about um, sort of his. This is his first, you know, foray into into comics, and uh, you know, sort of how he got there, and and sort of some of the inspirations behind Hexagon Bridge and everything. So uh, I thought it was a great conversation. So definitely go check that out, and uh, and also definitely check out Hexagon Bridge. Tales to Astonish has been pretty good. Uh, my goal for the month is. Uh, so I, I, I'll, I'll read comics on my phone while I'm getting, getting the kids to sleep. Uh, so I sort of always try to set aside something that I'll read on Marvel Unlimited or, or, uh, you know, Comixology or whatever. And, um, and so for this month, I'm trying to read Tales to Astonish 70 to 100, uh, which are, are the, um, the issues containing Namor and Hulk. So, uh, it's, it's pretty good so far. Um, I mean, it's not all that different from sort of your normal Silver Age 
stuff. I think though that the biggest thing here is the uh, the carryover to where uh, each of the stories. I mean, I, I I'm about four or five issues through, and um, the it, it's a it's an arc that carries over from book to book, uh, which isn't something I feel like happened a ton. Uh, at that point in time, especially considering, you know, like, uh, if I was reading, you know, uh, I, I read the Superman, uh, in the fifties book and, uh, they were all standalone stories that, that were self-contained into one issue. So the carryover, um, the, the carryover side of it is, is kind of cool. And, and then having the book split into two, the two different characters with the two stories is, is kind of nice. Uh, you essentially get 10 or 11 pages of, of each character uh, for each issue. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with that one because uh, they're both characters that I'm kind of interested in. Name more more specifically than Hulk at this point, but uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'm also uh, I'm reading Die from Karen Gillan. I believe the artist is Stephanie Hans. Uh, and I, I'm really surprised at how much I like it. So the the um, the premise of it is essentially, you know, Jumanji meets Dungeons and Dragons, right? Uh, it's a story of these kids that get caught in this this RPG, you know, uh, Dungeons and Dragons type game, and uh, get trapped there for two years, and then. Um, 25 years later they get trapped there again uh, and without revealing too much about it um, you know th th there's a sort of a new set of challenges they face the second time around um, uh, the the premise of it hooked me a little bit because I, I kind of like the the idea of a you know Lord of the Rings type fantasy stuff um, and I thought this was a unique twist on it so uh, I'm enjoying it a lot so far. Uh, Gillen has uh, has the pacing down to a T on this. I mean, in issue number one, we get the characters established and the the main problem set up uh, all within the first issue without feeling like it's been rushed, right? So um, it, it, it's it, the pacing is really great. Um, I feel invested in in the characters. I, I, I feel like he's fleshing them out pretty well. And I think that he... I, I mean, I've, I've liked Gillen's work for a while. I mean, Once in Future is fantastic. Uh, as well as uh, his Darth Vader run was very good. Uh, it was the first omnibus I owned. Um, so he... Uh, I, he's a writer that I really enjoy. So, yeah, I, I, I like how Die is going so far. And then issue number two um, it advances the story really well. And uh, I'm excited to, to finish it out with three through five. Um, the art, I, I can... The, the best way I can describe it is that I can tell that it's good. And, and it is good. Um, I just don't know that I'm fully into all the creative choices taken. Uh, it, it's a lot of it's photorealistic type stuff, which isn't my favorite kind of comic art. Um, I sort of prefer the more, um, the, the harder lines and, and things like that, but it's well done. And, and then the coloring in the book, it, it's, uh, Hans has limited herself to a very set, palette of colors and on one hand I can see why that might fit the story well based on how sort of grim and, and it's it's not a, a pleasant and happy story um, so I see I, I understand that creative choice I just don't know that I'm that big of a fan of it um, but yeah I, I'm excited to finish that one up that's kind of what I'm actively reading right now so uh, I'm, I'm excited to finish that one. I read Void Rivals number eight last week. Uh, it was one of the only pools that I managed to actually get on New Comic Book Day. I um, it was great. Uh, I did a, another review of it, um, or a separate video review of it, which I'll link to here. And um, 
it was really solid. Uh, I mean, the Energon universe continues to be uh, really great. Uh, and speaking of the Energon universe, uh, this week, uh, which I'll pick up on my way home from work today, uh, is uh, Transformers number seven, which has this just menacing uh, cover of Starscream ripping apart Soundwave. Um, and it'll be the first issue with Jorge Corona on art instead of Daniel Warren Johnson. Uh, which I'm obviously DWJ has been killing it on art uh, but we can just hope that that there won't be you know a beat missed when it comes to uh, Corona picking up art duties I, I think that the transition should be should be fairly easy uh, I think Corona's style fits the the style that DWJ has already put on the book so I'm I'm hoping that it'll that it'll work out okay. Uh, my main my main concern, or not even concern, my main uh, the main thing that I hope doesn't drop in quality is the lettering. Uh, the the lettering in these Transformers books has been just nuts. It's been fantastic. So uh, I honestly I haven't checked to see if uh, if there's a letter or change. But I hope there's not because it's it's been fantastic. I didn't mention this in the intro, but uh, my kids have been really getting into into Sonic lately. So we watched the um, Sonic One and Two the movies, and um, so I also started requesting the IDW series from the library. So we're two issues into that. Um, and I think they're liking it so far. Uh, I, I'll say, and I had this problem with it when I read it the first time, is that, like, the, the action's cool and it's fun, but it's a little hard to tell what's going on at times. And, and I think that that my kids are, are ha having sort of a similar issue. Um, but thankfully, you know, if I'm reading it to them, I can, I can sit and, and explain well. You know, look what happened here. This is what happened here, and I'll always recap the previous issue before I um, before we sit down and read the the next one. So uh, that's pretty good so far, um, and and it's it's cool to be able to share that with them. And uh, so yeah, so like we're on issue number two, and and I know we have three and four. They're these cool hardcover individual issues, which I'd never seen before, um, to where the, the, it's, it can, it's a hardcover book that contains one issue of, of Sonic, and, uh, I don't know if they're, like, specific to libraries or anything, what's interesting is that I don't see any sort of IDW branding on them, uh, so, I kind of wonder if, like, IDW, uh, licensed out their, <laughs> the ability to publish that to someone else in order to sort of add that into the, into the fray. But, um, yeah, so I have, we have the first four issues in those sort of individual hardcover books. And then, uh, I'm waiting on, uh, the second arc issues five through eight, uh, to come from the library. So that, that should be, that should be exciting. Well, I know that's a, uh, a shorter video than usual, uh, but like I said, I've, I've kind of been spending a bit more of my time, uh, you know, editing videos for the channel, so uh, that's taken up a little extra time. Uh, I'm hoping to, uh, this week, to just do a bunch of reading. Um, you know, I, I want to read... I want to finish reading Die. I want to read, uh, I got a volume one of Justice League in the Silver Age, uh, which has been a, a cool read. I started up on that one as well. Uh, and Tales to Astonish, I'm going to keep going with that. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, uh, here's some other videos uh, that you might like on the channel. Uh, please check them out. Uh, I appreciate all the support from everyone, and thanks for watching.